My dear friends in Christ, I think the best way for us to understand this gospel is from God's point of view. We're obviously talking about forgiveness in this gospel, but a forgiveness that is founded on charity. And what does this charity consist of? Not feeling. Not what other people think. But what God sees and God thinks. St. Paul, in talking about charity, you know, in his whole list, charity is kind and charity does not envy, charity is not puffed up, seeks no evil, rejoice in what is good, bears with all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endears all things. Well, there comes a point, there comes a time towards the end of that chapter or end of that part where where he's talking about charity. He says, when I was a child, I spoke as a child, I thought as a child, But now that I have become a man, I have put away the things of a child. Now I see as through a mirror, but then I shall see even as I have been seen. And St. Paul concludes, and there abides these three, faith, hope, and charity, and the greatest of these is charity. I shall see even as I have been seen. My dear friends in Christ, if we lived our lives more by taking into account how God sees us, how much better we would be. Far too often we play the game of popularity among our fellow men. Or we can go to the negative aspect and we react upon our feelings being hurt by our fellow men. And spiritually, we paint ourselves into a corner that needs not be there at all. We stunt our spiritual growth and we hurt our relationship with God. Because remember what Christ says, and he says it very emphatically, what you do to the least of my brethren, you do to me. People will talk about the least of the brethren as someone who's maybe not as smart or someone who has a lot of faults being seen. And I don't think that that's what is meant. I think the least of his brethren are the ones that we consider least. the one who bothers us the most, or the one who we have a grudge against. It is interesting that this parable is not spoken to the Pharisees or to the Jews. It's spoken to his disciples. What's a disciple? A follower of Christ. Are we not disciples? Is then not this gospel written for us and for our true and sincere consideration? And let us see the opportunity that we have today, right now, right here before God's face. If we believe what we say we believe and acknowledge ourselves being in his presence. Let us consider having gone to confession and being forgiven for the slightest venial sin or the slightest fault. But then again, we foolish creatures try to weigh things, a value of things in our own mind. 
isn't a fault or a, a fault that's an offense against God still an infinite offense because it offends the infinite? A venial sin, isn't it still an infinite offense because it, it offends the infinite? Gr- Grant it, it doesn't diminish totally the life of God in our soul. But still, it's an infinite offense. And we go to confession and confess. Say just one of them. Now let us consider all the sins we've last confessed. Now let us consider all the sins we have ever confessed. How much have we been forgiven? Infinite upon infinite upon infinite is the forgiveness of God to us. That's why our Lord makes this comparison. 10,000 talents, actually, it's about, a talent is about, oh, 1,400,000. There's discrepancies in what people think in calculating. So you have, let's just round it off to one and a half million times 10,000. And yet, even though that's a pretty big number, that number is only a slight sliver of what we have been forgiven. Now, as disciples, Christ tells us, as I have done to you, so you also do one to another. So today, let us check ourselves on our forgiveness. And if we have found that we are lacking, or we find that we are lacking, not in the eyes of our fellow men or in our own eyes, but in the eyes of God, why waste time? Let us forgive. Let us bury the hatchet and forget where we have buried it. Not for our neighbor's sake or for our own sake as much as it is or more importantly, for God's sake, who has loved us so much, who demonstrates that love every time we go to confession and every time we go to the holy sacrifice of the Mass, where he allows us, us blessed few these days, to witness him representing himself and that sacrifice of Calvary, that infinite sacrifice of his love for us. And let us in a small way reflect that out of love for him to our neighbor. Let us pay attention to the very end of the gospel where our Lord says, so also my heavenly father will do to you if you do not each forgive your brothers from your heart. Key point there, from your heart. Words are cheap and they don't mean much. From your heart, that's something only you have control over and I have control over. From our hearts. I'd like to conclude by pointing out in the epistle seems as if St. Paul is identifying this faculty of the soul, free will where he says put on the armor of God therefore take up the armor of God Stand, therefore, and take unto you the helmet of salvation. He's not saying the Lord's going to do it for you. He says you have to do it. 
You must choose to do it. You must want to do it. And let us not fool ourselves. These things are presented to us today. Let us be found faithful. And let us prove ourselves grateful by putting these thoughts and notions presented to us in today's epistle and gospel into action. For Christ's sake. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.